Good morning, everybody. It is me and Sadie. Welcome back. I wanted to tackle a topic today that's a little bit different for me. I wanted to comment on body integrity identity disorder. I think I said that right. It's B-I-I-D. A number of people in the comment section have asked me about this. Uh, someone told me that I had it which I don't, I'll get into that in a second. And someone also told me that they do have this and we had a conversation about that. So what is it and why am I talking about it on my channel? BIID means that you have a need to be disabled in some way. In my case, it was a need to go blind. Body Integrity Identity Disorder. It's also known as being transabled. You may have seen articles like this one where someone basically chooses to live as disabled or wants to live as disabled or feels like they should live as disabled when they aren't, when they are perfectly able-bodied. Someone may live in a wheelchair even though they have no medical reason to live like that whatsoever. Someone may walk around with like their eyes closed or squinted or something like that pretending to not have vision, pretending to be blind even though they have full sight. Someone may fold their leg up their pants and pretend to be an amputee when they aren't. Now at face value, especially if you are disabled, I think this is the thing that is very easy to react to emotionally. Like, how dare you, you know? It is not technically a disorder in the DSM-5, which is what psychologists use to diagnose psychological disorders. It's just seen as like a neurological disorder, but there isn't a ton of research on it. There are people who live like this. I saw an article about this once floating around Facebook and my initial reaction, I'll be honest, was kind of like, are, are you kidding? Like, given the choice, I would absolutely be able-bodied. Like, I do not want to live in pain. I would like to have two functioning legs, thank you very much. But those aren't the cards that I've been dealt and so I'm rocking life like this, you know? But here's the thing, if you look into it a little bit further, just like if you look into any disorder a little bit further, I think what you'll find, or what I found at least, is people's stories are hard. I'll put a link down below to a story that Barcraft TV did on a fellow who believes that his leg should be gone three inches below his hip. He believes it does not belong to him, that part of his body is not his body, it needs to be gone, it needs to be amputated. I've tried myself a few times by injecting medical grade alcohol. There was a sense of feeling of success, the sense of isolation and alienation not being able to talk to anyone, they're constantly having to put on a mask. He has tried to amputate himself twice. He has tried to pay a doctor to do it out of his own pocket. His dream is to be rid of his leg, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. As an amputee, I think I could choose to be like offended or whatever, but there's no reason to do that because I honestly feel really, really sorry for this guy. How much must you be suffering from something to try to cut off your own leg. That's horrible. To feel like something so doesn't belong to you for whatever reason that you wanna cut it off. Something that I did think was very interesting and is that in one actual study that was conducted on BIID, over 50% of the people who were in this study specifically felt like they should be amputees. There are so many disabilities out there. There are so many ways in which someone can be disabled, but over 50% specifically felt like their arm should be gone right here and can tell you exactly where the the stump should be. It really focused very heavily on limb loss, which I don't know, I just thought was interesting. So I will link the actual study which has a much a fuller report down below. Now there's a lot of debate in the medical field if it is ethically correct to, I guess, do optional amputations for people who have absolutely no medical necessity for it whatsoever. The consensus so far is that it's not right to do that and I can see why they would say that. I think um, mental treatment makes a lot of sense, whether that be a counselor or other forms of therapy. I am not a professional, I do not know, however, one thing I do know is that the world needs a lot more compassion. I see articles like this going around and I understand the outrage, but at the same time, whatever is going on in someone's head isn't right. Someone feels like something isn't a part of them, someone feels like something is wrong for whatever reason, like whatever caused that, whatever is going on, and they need help. Also to the person who suggested that I have this diagnosis in the comment section, I, I don't. Um, I definitely, definitely don't. The whole point with this diagnosis is that there is nothing medically wrong and that you feel like it isn't a part of you. Like you feel like 
something's wrong and it shouldn't be there. Neither one of those things is accurate. I have a lot of medical documentation that my ankle was very, very, very screwed up and was in a lot of chronic pain for years. And secondly, I liked my leg. I liked my leg a lot. I gave it a goodbye to her. It just had served its purpose and was dying and was on its way out and it was better for it to be gone than to continue giving me pain with no hope in sight. So I do not have body integrity identity disorder. I get the two eyes mixed up sometimes. I get why this is an emotionally charged subject because if I'm honest, there's a piece of me that does get a little reactive and a little like, you have a perfectly good body, you know? But people struggle for all different reasons and um, I don't know where this comes from and this is something I have never personally struggled with and so I can't comment on or judge what someone is going through and I don't think that this is something that someone chooses to have because I don't imagine that trying to chop off a part of your own body is something that someone enjoys doing for the most part. That sounds like very, very disordered thinking to me and something that really needs psychiatric help. So I have never met anyone personally dealing with this have you. I would love to hear from you. If you know more about this than I do, or if you know someone dealing with it, or if you are dealing with it, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, I'm going to leave a lot of links down in the description down below with articles and research papers that have been done and videos. So if you want to learn more about it, take a look. I think it is a very interesting subject. The more we can all educate ourselves, the better. But like I said before, I think the world can definitely use more compassion. So as you are learning about this, as I am learning about this, I think it, it is a good idea if we all try to do so through the lens of compassion and trying to understand, um, if nothing else. I'm lucky that I've never felt this way. I have never struggled with it. And if you never felt this way or never struggle with it, I'm very glad. And hopefully professionals are able to find an answer and a way to treat it in a healthy, effective way and help anyone struggling with this because it sounds like it'd be very, very difficult. All right, guys, that is it for me and Sadie today. Leave your comments. I look forward to talking to you in the comment section and I will talk to you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>